What up? It's Simon from Night Terror. As I'm sure you guys have seen, the channel name has changed and a few things have changed as well. I'm going to briefly explain that at the start of this video before we hop into it. Before anything gets started, I want to let you guys know that Omerta Garage, the official channel for their garage, is going to be in the description down below. There's going to be a link to it. If you guys wanted to go subscribe to them for more of the JDM content, feel free to do so. But I encourage you guys to stick around to see what we have going on as well if you guys are new to this channel. But as you guys may not know, this channel was Night Terror before it became America Garage. Unfortunately, with everything that's going on right now, we're not able to film videos together. So we decided to split it up into two different channels. So Emerge Garage is gonna be over at their garage, filming the JDM stuff, filming more of the RX-7, the Laurel, the 240s, all of that. And we're gonna keep doing what we do here at Night Terror, which is predominantly the BMWs. One last thing before we start the video, if you guys are trying to protect yourself in times like this, you need to go outside, you need to go in stores. I know there's a mandate right now. We have these masks for sale on the website. If you guys wanna check them out, there's gonna be a link in the description down below as well as stickers and everything for Night Terror that we've been doing. All right, I hope you guys are psyched. I hope you're staying subscribed. Making sure you're subscribing to the other channel as well. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. All right, what's going on everybody? It's Simon from Night Terror. We just picked up this BMW E36. It's an absolute nugget. It's a used drift car, and we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to show you guys what to look out for when you're buying a used drift car. Any used drift car, whether it's on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, Let Go, anything is gonna have issues with it. If somebody else was using it to drift, there's gonna be issues that you don't know about. So here's a couple things specific to the E36 generation BMW, specific to all drift cars that we're gonna show you guys to look out for when you're buying it. Before we get into it, let's roll that intro. So we're going to start out at the front of this E36. First, let me give you a little bit of background on it. This car has been owned by multiple people. It's been multiple people's drift car. And so there's a lot of stuff that's done on it that's probably less than superb. It was very, very cheap. So we didn't expect this all to be perfect, but we're gonna go over a lot of the things to look out for because this does have a lot of the common issues and things that you'll see on a drift car that should be red flags and you should be able to factor into the price you're getting the car for or even just walking away. So let's get into the first thing here. This is number one. This is one of the first things that if you've been into E36s and you've picked up on or any car, any drift car, you're gonna wanna look at the core support. If you want to come in just a little bit closer here it's easy to get carried away looking at stuff like the mishimoto radiator the hoses the e-fan strut bars all that stuff is that's cool that's a bonus but you really need to watch out for something like this on this car it's super apparent it's super easy which is another reason why we're showing you guys this is not the oem core support it doesn't have oem bolts obviously it's not the oem color and you can see it's been fastened in a way that is not oem what that tells me right off the bat is this thing has been in a front end collision. You can see as we get deeper into the car, a few of the other signs of that that we'll go over as well, but that's the main thing. You walk up to a car and you see a core support like this, you should know that it's been in a collision. Don't trust what everyone tells you on the Facebook messenger or anything like that or in person. If you see this, think in your head, front end collision. All right, let's move to the next thing. While we're on the topic of crash damage, obviously when we got to the car, we saw that core support had been replaced. That's gonna lead us to start looking for other things on the car that may have been damaged in the impact. A main thing to check is going to be the frame rails, making sure the frame rails are straight, making sure the frame rails aren't uh, what I would call soda canned or beer canned, as in pushed in, and then other little things around the car. So obviously if we come right here, if you wanna come in a little closer here, I don't know how easy you can see this, but this corner of the car, this fender, looks like it's been replaced in my opinion and all inside here, the metal's been pushed in. Now that isn't just necessarily from rubbing. I would be willing to bet that it actually is from a collision and it actually makes the headlights and the corner lights not bolt up in the stock location, which is fine for a drift car, but it's definitely something to keep in mind and talk to the seller about, make sure they're aware of and you're aware of before you buy the car. Let's, uh, let's stay on the topic of crash damage here and let's go look at uh, the back end. So as you can probably see here, this car has some bolted on over fenders. Not my favorite thing but obviously not a terrible thing. Uh, it's not covering the whole fender, so we actually do get to see quite a few dents on this fender. Obviously, it was a drift car before I've owned it. It was a drift car before the guy I bought it off of owned it. So this is completely normal. Things like this are not a huge deal to worry about if you're looking for sort of a missile car. If you're looking for something to get into drifting, you're gonna do this on your own if it's not already there. So not a huge thing to worry about. What is a huge thing to worry about if you come over here, what is a huge issue or what is an issue on these cars is gonna be the frame rails in the back, obviously checking for the same thing as the front. Frame rails are straight, not beer canned, and everything's looking good there. Common occurrence in a BMW crash, especially with these E36s, is it'll just twist the rear end up. 
if you look on a car, you'll actually be able to see the symmetry. You'll be able to see how it looks. And you can, you can tell, uh, especially if you've looked at more than one that's been crashed, you can tell when a car has been tweaked. And now that isn't necessarily frame. If you're looking for a bigger project, you could do something like the Big Duck Club uh, rear fender fix kit or like the fiberglass whole rear end. That is a big project though. So if you're looking to get into it, you're looking to get into it cheaply, I would highly recommend a car that isn't tweaked in any way in that way. As you can see, we talked a little bit earlier about this damage on the quarter panel here. It's kind of a game of, almost a game of clue. You gotta figure out what the extent of the damage is before you buy the car. If you buy a car and you don't look into all the damage, especially on a used drift car, you're gonna get bit, you're gonna have something go wrong and there's gonna be something that you didn't know about. And it's always better to see it when you're buying the car as opposed to when you get it home and you've already paid the money. So a big thing that I always do and I recommend you guys should do too, bring a jack with you. Jack up the car, especially in the rear end of the Z36s. Any BMW, especially if it's a drift car, you're gonna need to check the subframe, you're gonna need to check the rear end. Subframes can get torn out, that's why people do the reinforcement kits, and things like this can happen. If you wanna come in a little closer, I'll show you exactly what's going on with this car here. So one thing we noticed when we jacked up this car while looking at it, we were actually jacking up to replace a tire because it had a flat tire on it, uh, just trying to get it loaded up onto the tow truck, but one thing to always check, and it's always a good thing to check, these lug nuts are tight here, and this wheel has a ton of up and down play. Now that's leading us to believe there's either a wheel bearing that's bad or something bigger in the subframe. And when we bring this thing in and we actually start working on it, we'll be able to show you guys exactly what the problem is. But this was a huge red flag for me and it should be for you too if you see it. This wheel should never have up and down play or this side to side motion. That's gonna be a symptom of a bigger issue in the subframe. If you guys have had a similar issue like this, drop it down in the comments below, let me know how you guys fixed it, what it ended up being, and we'll show you guys in a future episode what it actually is and how we fix it. A couple more things that are wrong on this car. I'm gonna go over them real quick. These aren't huge issues, but they are things that are gonna to need to be addressed, especially before this thing goes out drifting. So one of the things that we actually were told about, shout out the shell seller. He was super cool about it. He let us know. It does have a bad power steering rack and possibly a power steering leak. Uh, you can definitely tell when you're at a stop, there's no power steering help. The steering is super, super stiff just from the up and down drive that we've done. There were also a couple more things that we needed to do to get this car running. We didn't cover that just because we slapped them on there. We got it fixed. We wanted to get this car running and then show you guys. Um, but that's enough of the bad. Let's start talking about some of the good things that are on this car, why we ended up picking it up and why we think it's going to be such a good beginner drift car for either one of our friends, me, myself, or anyone who wants to get into drifting. As one of the main things and a really cool piece of this car is the cooling system. As everyone knows, BMW cooling systems are notoriously underpowered. They're notoriously bad. They go bad, stuff fails, things like clutch fans, the reservoirs, a lot of that stuff can crack, go bad. And if you overheat these cars, it's really not good for the engines. So a cool thing this thing has is this Mishimoto radiator. It comes with the expansion tank and it has a Mishimoto e-fan. Now, they are wired in a little bit sketchy. We're probably gonna have to clean a little bit of that up and fix it a little bit, but that's a huge plus. That's a really nice modification, especially for any drift car. I'd say almost, almost before anything, if you're gonna do a drift car, I think your cooling system has to be bulletproof. And there'll be a few more things that we're gonna show. And we'll go into more detail when we actually bring it in about what you can do to bulletproof your cooling system, the cost effective way, the best way, and in our opinion, the only way to keep your drift car safe when you're railing it at this, on the street, at the track, or anything you might be doing with your car. The cooling system is a great place to start and luckily on this car, it's already been done for us. We'll keep it at the front end. There's a cool, a couple cool little parts. It does have these depot glass headlights, in my opinion. They look a lot cooler than the plastic ones that come with the USDM cars. Um, it's got some clear corner lights. That's also a cool plus. We're gonna have to figure out the wiring and everything. We don't even know if those work yet, but at the moment, it's a cool little feature. Um, other things just to note, it does have this Mishimoto intake elbow. It's got a random eBay intake, which I personally don't really care for, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It's got a little strut bar on it and it is on coilovers. We're gonna take a closer look at the coilovers, see what they are, and probably talk about how these stack up to something like a BC or even something like a max peening rod, the really cheap end. Uh, so we can uh, see what fits, so we can see what will be best for this build and will be best for your build if you're looking to build a similar car. Let's move for, uh, to the interior right now. Actually, Let's go with a little bit of exterior. I'm gonna to quickly touch on the exterior. Obviously with a drift car, if you're a beginner drifter, 
exterior isn't going to be the most important thing at all. But there are a cool couple of pieces on this car. Uh, it does have these Style 32 17 by 9s. Uh, obviously, they're not painted very well, and there are some bends in them. They're not perfect, but they're good for this car. I think they suit it. It has these little over fenders. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about them. I prefer more of an entire over fender versus the fender flare. But other than that, not a ton to note. Let's get into the interior. We have a couple more things wrong here, but nothing major and a couple cool parts. Hey, Gage. Want to work on a shitbox? Is that Gage? Okay. It's your boy. Hey, Gage. I can't get it off. I can't get it off. Whee! All right, guys. So moving into the interior, started with the steering wheel. It does have a renowned steering wheel. It's pretty beat. It's on an NRG. Shout out NRG. Hub and quick release. Uh, those are cool. That's a plus. Definitely not needed. Um, it's. I'm in this Sparco seat right now. It's actually a pretty good seat. It comes with some good seat rails. It's not all the way built it down, but... Definitely a cool piece, and it does have this nice auto power half cage in it. You know, that's enough of the good of the car. Let's talk about some of the bad. I mean, I can, can show you guys here. The switches are not exactly in, and that uh, that window doesn't work at all. It's completely off the rails. It's gonna be something we need to address in the future. It's got this crazy double din touchscreen stereo system that completely, I, I don't know, man. I could not tell you, I don't know. Anyways, big things to note, AKG shifter, it's got a steering wheel in it, it's got a seat in it, that's cool, it's completely gutted. It's a good start. I got done showing you the outside of the car, all the things you can expect without actually putting the car up. Now we're kind of going to get into the bigger stuff, the stuff that we alluded to earlier, the stuff that we think was going on, and right now I'm going to tell you guys about the subframe. Now this car underneath, something we noticed right when we were buying it, this car is disgusting underneath. I probably haven't seen this much gear oil underneath a car in any of my E36s. You know, it's, it's bad. And we'll show you guys in a little bit. But one thing that I wanted to talk about, if you'll come over here real quick. One thing that I first want to talk about, we actually showed you guys this on the car when it was outside. So we found out what the issue for this was, and we're going to show you what it is, as well as what other causes could be. Now we assume that something could either be loose in the subframe, broken in the subframe, um, even a cracked subframe. Uh, and what we were most worried about, which would have been the worst case scenario in our personal opinion, would be a subframe that is ripped out of the car. Now when a subframe gets ripped out of the car by the studs, that's a huge fix. We're actually gonna be doing that and we'll be covering how to fix that if it does happen to you, what parts to buy, what you're gonna need to weld. It is a very involved process, but we'll try to show you guys as much as possible of it. Very, very fortunately for us, that was not the case on this car. In this case, it had swapped axles and a swap differential, and it must have been that somebody who swapped the axles or the differential didn't know the torque spec, something wasn't tight. So let's get a little bit closer into that, and we'll actually show you what's going on on the other side where there's some more light. We're, we're, dude, we're in there like somewhere. We're dude. so in here, dude. All right, guys, so this side we actually have already disassembled. This is kind of where we did the diagnosis on what it could be. And now here's what we figured out. When we felt that movement, it really did feel like wheel bearing movement. It wasn't the wheel being loose on the hub, and we couldn't find anything that we found loose in there aside from some axles. Diff will, I'll get into all that later. There was a lot of stuff loose in the subframe, but the main thing that was causing that wobble, that was one of the reasons we couldn't even drive it home, had to get it towed here, was this right here, the axle nut. Do you want, if you know anything about E36s, you snapped axles, shout out to Isaac Applejuice. Hopefully today we're gonna help him not snap any more axles, but you'll know this nut. There's a very specific foot pounds torque spec. There's a very specific torque spec on these. You don't have to get it exactly there, but when they are loose, it can make that wheel, that loose wheel bearing symptom. Things that we found out when we took this off and we got onto the subframe. First of all, sway bar bolt was loose, two of them. So the sway bar was barely even connected. Diff bolt was loose and the axle bolts going into the diff, the, what connects the axles to the differential were actually loose. Almost all of them were loose. There was a ton of play. Ooh, look at this. Just found another thing. That ain't tight. That ain't tight at all. Those are this one. Oh, well, I kind of tightened it. Oh man, you gotta check get your some... studs. Red Loctite your studs, guys. Come on. Come on. <laughs> red Loctite. It ain't that hard, bro. It's one dab of Red Loctite. It's eight bucks. All right. But what we actually found is this stub of the axle, the one that goes into the hub. That actually does play a part in holding the entire wheel bearing and the entire knuckle assembly together, especially as it connects to the subframe with your diff. 
So we found that this bolt was actually very, very loose. We actually put a big impact on it. You can do it with a breaker bar. You can do it with a wrench if you really have that much force, if you want to put your weight into it. Making sure those are tight is a huge thing. Whoever installed these axles, no, no harp on them. Maybe they didn't have a big impact or they didn't have a breaker bar or something, but they weren't tight and that was creating that wheel bearing issue. Luckily for us, very luckily for us, it was a simple fix. All we had to do was throw the gun on it, tighten our axle bolts, tighten up a few bolts on the underneath. We're still gonna be doing a few things, swapping that gross diff out, uh, putting some parts that we have in it to make it a little bit better. And, uh, but yeah, super, super grateful, super lucky that that was our, our issue and that was our fix. Uh, let's go do it to the other side and I'll show you guys the before and after, after we rail on that bolt for a little bit. This is the side that hasn't been fixed yet. We're gonna show you how simple this fix was and how lucky we are that this is the fix. Wait, let's see that jiggle. Oh yeah, let's, let's get the jiggle one more time. This up and down movement. Now keep in mind, these studs are tight. The nuts are tight. This is all movement in the hub and wheel bearing. Now, all I'm gonna do is put, what size is this? A 32 millimeter, I have one of these. Wait, no, mine wasn't the right size. Here's mine a 36. Let me get in there. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna put a 32 millimeter socket on this. Uh, some of them are 36, some of them are 12 point, some are six point. Make sure to check and uh, get the appropriate one, impact socket. This doesn't have a ton of battery left, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to tighten it to the torque spec, but we'll definitely make sure that we get a breaker bar on it, we make sure it's all tight. But I'm just gonna give you one more rundown. Look at how shaky this is. Now watch this. Nothing, dude. I'm so, so pumped. That was the fix for our subframe. Literally, I mean, I'm no more shake. Easy as that. It's a five second fix. We're stoked. This thing's almost ready to get on the road. Hell yeah. And uh, dude, let's go slide tonight, honestly. Let's go slide tonight. Are you stuck in your car? No. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you can't get out there, guy. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you need a hand? Ah. Oh, you really? <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> ah. Don't work. All right. <laughs> I told you we were going to do a couple more upgrades to this car before it's streetable, before it's drivable. This is a major thing. As I said before, underside of the car was completely filthy. And I think we might have found the cold stop dude Talk, well, just, uh, be, what? Just, just film it normal film it normal. i be am normal. <laughs> be normal what are you doing this is normal don't fucking walk all around okay don't walk i'm gonna beat your ass mom put that camera down dude see what happens <laughs> ah, 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 it's so bright it's hey so, it's so bright. Okay. all right all right all right all right come on, so come on. we were under the car we saw the fucking oh. quiet on <laughs> I'm Alpha. making a YouTube video! <laughs> spray painted dick on your dick, dude. So, this diff, this is this is a prime example. You know what I was saying? Get down with it Everything, like you're okay, fucking you know, you the alligator saying, man. This is the what to watch out for when buying a drift car. This is why. Things like this, all right? And no disrespect to the previous owner. Whoever did this, I don't know who it was. Fuck this that is, diff. This is, fuck, fuck this diff, dude. <laughs> what are you doing? Now, there are some pluses. Solid diff mounts, those mm. are nice. I'm gonna reuse those actually in this diff. This diff came out of my M3, uh, just when we were doing a normal service of it, checking up on the subframe and everything. I went to a freshly welded diff, but this has been a trusty steed for a while. Shout out Fisher, I think this is actually a diff from Fisher. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a variable that we just like to eliminate. Uh, <laughs> get it? Um, okay, so yeah, Lance, you're almost to the top. <laughs> all right <laughs> all right guys so with this diff it could be good this isn't necessarily something Ooh, heart you attack. have to do what you good I'm, I'm good okay this isn't something you necessarily need to do right away this is something that you should do if you're planning on keeping the car if you have the parts this diff could have been completely good but there are a lot of things that i want to go over and show you what we're going to do differently now, first thing we have to do is we're going to remove these diff bushings. These are solid bushings, so they might be a little bit difficult to run uh, 
to actually get out of there, but we'll make it work. We should just hammer out. We're gonna, yeah, pretty much. We're gonna slap them in this diff. Another thing, we gotta change these axle output flanges. This is a 328, my car is an M3. So the M3 ones and the 328 ones are a little bit different. Um, so we're gonna pop the flanges out. That's super easy. We'll show you how to do it just for kicks. Uh, there's a million videos on swapping your own diff, so I didn't show you guys how to pull it out. Um, maybe we'll do one in the future if you guys wanna see it, but leave a comment down below if, if you need that information, if you would like it. But right now I wanna talk about what they did wrong on this diff. Now, like I said, the solid diff bushings are a plus, but I don't know if you guys can see, like I'm wearing gloves and this is gross to touch. Like, look at that, dude. This is enough RTV to do every gasket on your car. Like you don't need this much RTV. This diff, as you can see, it's RTV. There you go. Get the, <laughs> this diff, don't get that. It's gonna be out of focus, dude. No, it's Actually, good. Actually, is it? Yeah, it's good. Uh, this diff, as you can see, this diff is RTV'd. It doesn't have a gasket. It was recently, or not recently welded, but it was welded. And this diff actually, I mean, it leaks a tiny bit, but whatever, it's a drift car, it doesn't really matter. They use probably 10 times the amount of RTV and their diffs still leak like this. I mean, this is disgusting. And by the way, this isn't all diff fluid. I know that. This is actually from an exploded axle and a couple other things uh, that we touched on earlier with them replacing the axles. I'm not quite sure what happened, but at any rate, we're gonna throw this diff in because we know it's good, we know it works, and it's a lot cleaner and it's not leaking. So we're gonna do that, and then there's only a couple more, th more things before this thing's ready, honestly. Jeez, dude, what the fuck is up with this? <laughs> Thanks for yeah, the help. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't fucking whack me. Oh, oh no! <laughs> 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 All right, guys, we're gonna start wrapping this up. This is gonna go back in the car. For now, I think that's gonna be all the work we're doing on the car until we try our first test drive. We're obviously gonna find out a couple more things wrong with it and have to fix those. But I hope this video helped you guys out and I hope you guys can learn something from this. Hopefully it all stays together and I'll catch you guys in the next one. That's it. Suicide ever gives me from the rooftop The only thing I ever did was mention it Ever since leg burn me a CD of the way That shit probably still in my boombox But nowadays I can walk into an establishment And select like myself on the fucking jukebox If I wanted to, cop a black coon charge Drop that shit like two blocks And then smash in the back of a new cop car Now I think I'm on it too